Welcome to Medicines Discovery Catapult. The Catapult is part of a network of organisations set up by the government. This network of organisations help really important parts of the UK industry. What we're looking after is the medicines discovery sector. So we're here to work in collaboration across lots of different organisations like the NHS, charities, industry, academia, patients themselves, to really transform great science into new medicines for patients. So thank you for joining us today and we look forward to telling you more about work than a science and medicines discovery organisation. I would describe working in science as exciting, challenging, motivating, satisfying, fulfilling, innovative and fun. Welcome to the Medicines Discovery Catapult. Think about the last time you took a medicine might have been a paracetamol for a headache or maybe even a, a vaccination for COVID-19 in the last year or two. So how was that medicine discovered? You know, what was the work done in the background to develop those new medicines? And that's what we're here for really. So we work with companies across the UK to help them take their ideas and develop those ideas further to develop the medicines of the future. We're all living longer nowadays and while that's fantastic, what that does mean is that New types of illnesses are becoming more common um, as people get older. So there's a real need for new medicines and that's the work that we do is work with our partners to try and develop different types of new medicine. We're working really hard to make sure that the UK is at the forefront of medicines discovery so that we can get better medicines out there to help people live longer and healthier lives. Making medicines is incredibly difficult, incredibly expensive, and as you can imagine, we have to make sure that it's completely safe before any patients to take a new medicine. So it all starts off by understanding each disease as they, um, as they come through. So I'm gonna use an example of cancer. So a lot of cancer uh, treatments are out there, but we still haven't cured cancer. Each cancer is very different. So a member of my family could be very different to a member of your family and those cancers are very different, which is why it's so difficult to cure cancer as an example. And so what we do is actually understand the biology of those cancers. We start off with understanding a particular driver of the disease. Now this could be um, a particular protein um, that actually is actually affecting the disease. What we do is actually understand that protein and then we build compounds or molecules that will actually target that protein. Often it's to actually block it in the biological pathway so then it doesn't it no longer has an effect and we use that using cell lines within the laboratory. Um, we can then test those cell lines through a range of different what we call assays. Now assays can be just small tests that we put the cells through to see whether they're actually having the, the effect. In oncology, we actually look to see whether those potential new medicines are actually killing the cells, because what we want to do is make sure those cells are dying and not spreading as cancer can through the body. But what we have to make sure happens is that it's not actually killing any of the other cells in the body. So it's what we call targeted approach. And then as we go through the drug discovery process, we actually take those potential new medicines through into tissue models and then from tissue models we look at then going into clinical trials. Now the clinical trials process is where patients who already have the disease and actually then test those new molecules on them to see whether they're actually having an effect and in cancer there's a lot of cancer patients who are prepared to take that chance of testing these new medicines to see whether they are actually active and having an effect. We can also um, look at those patients specifically. We take a test of those patients to see whether they will actually respond to that treatment. So we know a lot of treatments don't work in patients. So we then have to, as biologists, understand why those medicines aren't working. When it passes the clinical trials and we know that it's having the desired effect in the patient, then what we can do is then take it through all the regulatory processes. And at the end of that, if it ticks all the correct boxes, then this becomes a medicine for patients to be able to receive in the future and be able to be treated and hopefully cured. 
knowing that we're making a difference to our patients is, is what gets us out of bed in the morning. And as we work very closely with patients and they tell us what's important about their disease, allows us to make sure that we factor in those parts of our medicine making to make sure that they get the best medicines moving forward. I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions now and see if you can tell me the answer. So out of 250 projects in drug discovery, how many do you think actually becomes a drug for patients? So the answer out of 250 projects, uh, only one of those medicines will actually make it into a patient. Okay, the second question is how long do you think it takes to develop a new drug? So the answer is 15 years or more. And the reason why is because there are so many different gates that that drug discovery process has to go through before it's safe and tolerated for a patient. Final question is how much do you think it costs to develop just one medicine? Okay, so the answer to this one, and I'd love to know if any of you actually got even close to this. So one drug in a patient can cost up to 850 million pounds. I enjoy working in science and at MDC because at heart I'm a problem solver. I like puzzles and there's no greater puzzle than trying to work out how to treat a disease. I really like working as a scientist. I really like working with biomarkers. I think it's the future of science. Uh, I think it will help us to develop much better um, treatments, diagnose diseases faster, predict better um, how patients will respond. Um, and collectively, it's, it's really exciting to be uh, part of that kind of scientific research. So I love working as a scientist. I think one of the main advantages of what we do is that every day is different. We're always working on the forefront of um, science and innovation, and that means that there's always something new to discover. Um, so your day-to-day -day life just changes all the time. I really enjoy what I do. Every day is different. There's new discoveries all the time. The scientific field I'm working in is, is changing a lot, so there's lots to learn every day, and that's really enjoyable. What I enjoy about working in science is meeting other scientists, learning about their projects um, and their creative idea. Um, it's really encouraging to see how creative um, and how talented some scientists are out there. I've worked throughout my career you know, on many different drug programs. When you see the drugs go through the development process and end up treating patients and making their lives better, there's nothing better. Here at MDC, there are lots of different types of jobs that aren't just about doing science in laboratories. Because every bit of science that we do for another organisation, we have to plan how that's going to work. We have to understand how many people work on that. What types of equipment is it going to use? How long is it going to take? How much is it going to cost? So there's a lot of project management and analysis around that. We also have people that look at data and information. So our scientists in the lab create a lot of information when they look at cells, when they look through the microscopes. And that information can be joined together to create really important pools of data. And that gives us even more information about how to make new medicines and new drugs in the future. I always thought I want to be with, with smart people because that means I can continue to learn. Working at NDC allows me, allows me to do this, but it's important to me that I can actually support important science that will sometime down, down the line help, help people survive, help people live better lives. Um, and uh, that gets me up in the morning. To make a difference, it makes you smile, it makes you want to get up and come to work every day. If you're passionate about what you do, then you want to add value. Well, it's the reason I come in every day. I absolutely love being able to be part of something that does so much good. I've come from financial services, so actually been able to move into the science arena and actually bring all of my expertise and knowledge to ensuring that we can do as much good as possible is massively my motivation for why I come to work. What we do here as an organisation is 
um, create new drugs and that means that those drugs can get to patients faster and that's really important to me because um, it's going to help your mum, it's going to help your nan, it, it helps me, I'm asthmatic. So um, for me, that's, that's why I work where I work because um, it inspires me. I'm David, I'm Marketing Manager for Medicines Discovery Catapult. And I'm Ekta, and I'm the Partnership Manager of the Psychiatry Consortium, also working at Medicines Discovery Catapult. Dr. Ekta. <laughs> and one of the things I found most interesting about working here is the amount of roles, because I thought everybody was a doctor and everybody was a scientist who worked in a lab, wore a lab coat, but you don't do that, do you? No, not anymore. Um, so previously, um, I was a scientist working in the lab with a white lab coat. Um, but then I thought I wanted to try something different, use my scientific background. Um, and then I applied to be a partnership manager. So now in my current role, I work with um, different pharmaceutical companies. So they're the people that make the drugs um, and I bring them together to work collaboratively and try and bring medicines um, to the market sooner for patients. So what does doctor mean then if you're not a medical doctor as in like a GP? Yeah, exactly. So I'm not a GP, um, but a doctor is essentially a PhD. So that means I have, after doing my degree, I've gone back to university and I've studied further in one particular area. Um, so essentially become an expert in one particular field. Um, and for me, that was a um, PhD, which kind of incorporated um, working with finger marks and um, pharmaceutical science. So yeah. well, there's loads of different roles. There's not just uh, people in the labs, like we've discussed with Hector. There are also like myself, who was in com communications. So as a marketing manager, uh, I'm basically a storyteller and I'm here to tell the very complicated stories that sometimes comes out of medicines discovery um, to various different audiences. Sometimes the people who work in, in medicines and pharmaceuticals, other times it's people like the general public who are just interested or want to know about these things. And they're the stories that I, I'm sort of responsible for telling. So how did you actually get into that then? Well, well, my background has come from doing science communications, but not medicines before. Before it was to do with animals and conservation. So I actually started off as a zookeeper, looking after rhinos and monkeys and things. And then uh, I started to create content and make videos. Uh, and that moved me into sort of a marketing role, which is, which is where I, I ended up telling stories, either through content on social media or websites or, or um, using YouTube and things like that. So that's how I've come about, you know, getting into science communication and that's where I am now. I think that's the really important thing as well, that you can use your passions and apply it to science. You don't just have to be a scientist in the lab. And I think that's a really important message. That is, that's really important. And if you're thinking of uh, your futures and your careers, I'd probably advise you, if you are interested in science, don't just think you've got to be a scientist and you've got to be doing the science with the microscopes and things. There's lots of different roles, so don't dismiss it and, and, and look at those and explore further about roles in science if that's something that interests you, but you don't necessarily want to be a scientist. Yeah. But if you do want to wear a lab coat and wear goggles, you can still do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I would very much recommend a career of scientist. I think we should have more scientists in the world. I think um, science changes, changes the world and it's really exciting to be a part of it. So I think the two most important skills for being a scientist is number one, being creative, and number two, being curious. Um, science is all about um, finding new discoveries and putting them into context of everything we already know and creating something new from them. And that's why it's really important to be creative and curious about what we're doing. The skills you need to be a good and effective scientist are curiosity, um, resilience. And you need resilience because things don't always go right the first time. They might not go right the 10th time either. So it, as well as resilience, you need a sense of humor. 
the skills I think are useful when coming into the science industry is uh, a real willingness to learn. Um, coming to this job, I have realized that I've had a lot to learn. It's been right outside my comfort zone, so I've been challenged um, every day almost. So every day feels like a school day, but I've really enjoyed that. If you love being an investigator, if you love discovery, I really recommend that you go for a career in science. Science isn't easy, um, but if you've got an interest and you've got a passion for it, then it's worth the challenge. Within Medicines Discovery and science organisations, there's loads of challenges. There's loads of different obstacles we need to overcome and so everybody's welcome. We need people from lots of different um, types of backgrounds, project managers, finance, legal, scientists. We all need to work together. The challenges are hard, um, but it's fun and rewarding to be able to be working together in a team with lots of different people to try and overcome these challenges to make a difference to, to medicines in the future. So I hope when you're thinking about your career and your job choices, um, you've learned something about science and the medicines discovery sector today, and you, you might consider that as a, as a future direction for you, whether you're a scientist in the lab or not. So thanks very much and goodbye.